President Biden declaring America first is dead. The president causing controversy in two key areas today, the vaccine and foreign policy. While meeting with world leaders, Biden jumped on board the vaccine equality bandwagon. And then later today, he promised to distribute the shot more fairly to the world. He's also dishing out $4 billion to do it. Keep in mind, we've only fully vaccinated 12 percent of the American people. It's not enough that we find cures for Americans. There needs to be a cure that the world is able to take part of, because you can't build a wall or a fence high enough to keep a pandemic out. As for America first, when it comes to foreign policy, Biden boasting that it's a thing of the past. America is back. I speak today as president of the United States at the very start of my administration, and I'm sending a clear message to the world. America is back. The transatlantic alliance is back. And we are not looking backward. We are looking forward together. I know, I know the past few years have strained and tested our transatlantic relationship. But the United States is determined determined to re-engage with Europe, to consult with you, to earn back our position of trusted leadership. All right, Juan, please educate me here, because under the Trump administration, we've strengthened NATO, cut a Mideast peace deal, cut trade deals with Mexico and Canada and South Korea and China. I, I just don't see exactly where we went it alone. And even if we did, so what? Well, I, you know, I mean, we can have a debate about isolationism uh, versus the U.S. engaging the world uh, as a global leader. But I don't think there's any question, Jesse, over the last four years under President Trump, his approach to NATO, for example, was very critical, uh, not only about funding and the like, but making it clear that the U.S., you know, was sufficiently strong militarily and economically to make their own decisions and not engage in alliance, alliances that have been standard since World War II. And I think that what you're hearing from Joe Biden today is he's engaging that same post-World War II attitude, an attitude that was engaged in by, you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt to Ronald Reagan to George W., George H. W. and George W. Bush to Barack Obama that says America is a light on a hill and that we are going to have something to say about the way the world moves and is the world is shaped going forward. Because, you know, it is hard in this era to talk about being alone. It, it, it's, it's almost impossible. And leading is expensive. Okay, so engagement. Okay. Did you want to jump in there, Jillian? Oh, I was just saying, you know, if you do want to lead, it's going to cost money in today's world. That's the other reality. It's going to be expensive. Um, the thing about Biden today is you may not agree with his decision to join COVAX, that's the International Vaccine Alliance. You may not agree with his decision to have America rejoin the nuclear deal, but these things happening at once are a living, breathing example of the Biden doctrine. If you didn't see them coming, you've been living under a rock for the last uh, 12 years. I mean, he's been talking about the, you know, wanting the U.S. to join in a deal with Iran since before he was even the vice president, however many, 13 years ago now on the campaign trail. Um, a quick word on the Iran nuclear deal announcement that's come out of this. Today, Jen Psaki told reporters on Air Force One that one of the main reasons they want to get the U.S. back in is to have, quote, visibility into what's happening on the ground inside Iran. She said under Trump, we had no idea what was going on when we pulled out of that deal. We lost our ability to see inside the country and protect ourselves from their nuclear development. Fine. But then in the next breath, Psaki said, um, under the current plan, the United States will not be talking to Iran directly at all. They will be doing all communicating through Europe. As a former foreign policy official, my question for the White House would then be, how do you plan to have any visibility if we're not actually talking with Iran at all? How are we going to sit down and get a deal with them if we never sit down at a table with them? Greg Gutfeld? Yes, Jesse. How are you? I'm fine, <laughs> thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing good. It's Friday. Thinking about what I'm going to eat. I was also thinking about a new slogan for uh, Joe. Instead of America first, it could be America, you're not all that. Or America, it's not, <laughs> it's not me, 
it's you. Because in a sense, Joe Biden is breaking up with the American public in favor of a hot, new, exotic partner, the world, right? The world, it's very alluring. It's got an accent. It's international, makes you feel cosmopolitan <laughs> when you get to fly all over the place. But he said, sorry, America, Joe just isn't that into you anymore. Uh, and the media has to push this myth that somehow Trump's foreign policy had taken America off the stage, and that was in shambles. But they have to push that narrative in order to allow Joe to succeed by undoing what Trump did. So you don't hear about North Korea, which is always the most important thing. Joe entered this picture never being asked about North Korea. Why is that? Because it's not a problem. Who made that not a problem? A guy named Trump. Remember, that was the biggest problem. That was what Obama told Trump coming in. The biggest problem, North Korea, he said that to him, and then all of a sudden the biggest problem goes away. Then you have the, a, a plethora, a word I love to use, of Middle East peace plans. You got the trade deals, you got Mexico stepping up on the immigration. You have something that I like to call no new wars. Uh, you killed an Iranian general who killed a lot of people. You killed a few terrorists. I mean, this is not, th he had a pretty phenomenal foreign policy uh, resume, and I think the media pretends it was terrible because he was an outsider who kicked the insider's ass. Trump exposed the, exposed the John Kerry's and the Hillary Clinton's of the world and all these swampy cohorts that they're incompetent charlatans. I mean, even Fareed Zakaria has, had, has admitted that Trump did some good things, which means he did, some, did more than a few good things. As for the vaccines, I would be very suspicious when I hear phrases like vaccine nationalism. And it's implied that if you want to get Americans vaccine, uh, vaccinated first, you're xenophobic. And that's a phrase that the media and, and is pushing primarily the Washington Post. But the simple, the simple fact is, in order to help others, you have to help your family first. A good neighbor, uh, you have to tend to your home and your property before you can help others. The guy with the great lawn has the tools, but he's got to do his lawn first before he can help yours. The <laughs> idea that somehow we should be doing this before we do us, that's not sound policy. And it ribs. won't fly, Judge. I'm having ribs. Could you imagine the back? I'll hey, tell of you course. why. I'll tell you Judge, why. Could what, you what imagine the backlash if, if the French start getting <laughs> shots and, and people in, in Philadelphia <laughs> and Detroit haven't been shot yet? Yeah. Well, but you know, but you know what this speaks to? It speaks to the Biden administration policy, which is America last, and that he would get up and say, forget about everything that has happened in the past. Forget about our telling you, NATO, that by the way, you have to pay your own way. I'm tired of taking you to dinner all the time, and I'm going to make sure that my people are protected, <laughs> that my people have jobs. All of a sudden, that's a bad thing. But the amazing part of all of this is that this vaccine equity movement is crazy because it was Donald Trump who did the warp speed and the vaccine and the whole issue by the way with Iran I mean this is just Obama all over again and remember when we were negotiating with them the tats and the, the tans and the facility they hid from us Iranian backed militia attacked us in in Iraq and Erbil I mean wh who are we kidding here this is nothing more than Biden's uh, uh Obama apology went to the Middle East when he went to Egypt and apologized for America. Biden is doing the exact same thing in his first 30 days, apologizing to the world for being America and confirming America will be last because I'm going to put everybody else first and I'm giving you $4 billion to make sure everybody's vaccinated while people in America are suffering. I don't buy it, never did, don't think it's American. But then I'm American. I, <laughs> yeah, I guess the only difference is it's a virtual apology tour. It's all just over the True. satellite. Hopefully that changes soon. Coming